you brilliant students, coming here today for this very special occasion. And it's befitting. It feels good to be in school. Because Lord knows we are at another pivotal time in history. We just elected the 45th president. So as I take my seat, I, I, I ponder over how far. Thank you. I ponder over how far we have come, but I wonder, thank you, how much further we must go. You see, I live in the spirit of Mega Evers, Martin Luther King Jr., and Rosa Parks. Yes, Rosa Louise McCauley Parks, an African American civil rights activist whom the United States Congress calls the first lady of the civil rights and the mother of the freedom movement. Well, today, several states, but it started right here in Ohio when Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, well, at the time she was the Ohio House Representative, she and others, state legislators, passed legislation designating December 1st that's the Rosa Parks Day. You all know her story. On December 1st, 1955, Rosa boarded the Cleveland Avenue bus, number 2857, when the bus driver, James F. Blake, now you remember that name, ordered her and three other African Americans give up their seats in the color section for white passengers after the white section was filled. Now, chapter six, section 11 of the city code gave bus drivers police powers to racially assign seats. Well, the other three quickly responded and got up, but not Rosa. She just moved from the aisle seat to the window seat, but she never did give up her seat. She was arrested and bailed out the next evening by her friend, Clifford Dar and Edgar Nixon, the president of the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP. Now her arrest sparked the Montgomery bus boycott and led to Browder and Gale, the 1956 court case on the basis of which the United States District Court abolished segregation in transportation for the jurisdiction in which Montgomery, Alabama is located. Life has a funny way of leveling the playing field and doing the right things as a way of straightening things out. But courage, yes, and standing up for yourselves has a way of changing things. Now, no one would have imagined that in 1943, 12 years earlier than the Montgomery bus boycott incident, that Rosa Parks and Blake, that same Blake, had their very first encounter. You see, Rosa, she boarded a bus driven by Blake. She entered the front door of the bus, paid her fare, and as she continued to take her seat, Blake told her to follow the city rules and to enter the bus again from the back door. Well, she exited the front door of the bus. And then as she came around 
to use the back entrance of the box, that's when Blink just drove off, leaving Rosa behind. Well, now, she just stood there in the rain. And then she sat down and she waited for the next bus to arrive. The Montgomery bus board got a 1955, lasted for 381 days, breaking a stronghold on the city, divided by the Jim Crow laws, oppression, inequality, and injustice. But in spite of the degradation and content, the African American citizens of Montgomery, they knew in their souls that they were valuable people. And as sure as the air they breathe, they believe that they had inalienable rights. So they just forged on and created a movement with thousands of people to change this nation all because one, one, one individual took a stand by sitting down. Now, you brilliant students, as I look upon the troubles of the world today, there is an uneasiness in the air. Fear, anger, distrust, meanness and bullying. A climate moving towards violence instead of peace. Now where are the peacemakers? Where is the good, the good will? Now I know it's in your hearts. Where's the compassion for one another? Now that's where we need to start. Where's the magic? Making a great impression as citizens of these United States, we can become the power one and build unity from division. We can change division to diversity and rise up and be stronger together than apart. Rosa Parks didn't give up her seat because she was tired. She was not physically tired at all. No more tired than you are at the end of a hard day. And she was not old, even though some imagine her as being old then. She was only 42. The only tired she was, was tired of giving in. So, whether you are 17, 22, 42, 62, 82, or 102, I call for you to take action now and do your part and stand in the power, Rosa Parks. Because after all, you brilliant students, we are God's people. So why don't you, you, and you let your light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going, yes, let it shine. You beautiful, brilliant students, enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Michael.